right, so if there really is a father and he calls himself the son, is there really a son? The son of who? He is the son of he is the son of he is the son of God. The son in the flesh. The son of the father? Yeah. So but, was the son pre existent before the incarnation? Yes. Right, so brother, you're, you, you are adopting Trinitarian concepts, but you're just refusing to call it Trinity. Probably, yeah. I'm so just... why are you ashamed to call it Trinity? Because, like I said, this, I understand the concept, but there's some things that I don't fully understand. Right, tell so, me what you don't fully understand. See, I used to go to a Pentecostal church. Like, and uh, their teaching was kind of odd, and some of the things they taught was I wasn't quite sure. And so, for a long time, it left me confused because I used to, because it used to be more like a Unitarian Pentecostal church where it was like Yeshua is just the Son, he's not like God himself, he is just the Son. And so it was like, well, hang on a minute, I'm pretty sure you sure is God. Yep. But, and so there was a lot of things that proper confused me when I first... Great. Would you... Great. And I understand, bro, yeah. you've, you've gone to a, a fellowship yeah. that's been poor in discipleship because it's poor in theology. Yeah. Right? But here's your chance to grow in your yeah. discipleship, yeah. to grow in your faith. But that requires humility from you. Yeah, I understand that. Now, yeah. now, now just walk, walk with me through a, a passage of scripture, will you? Okay? Now, you believe in the Bible? Oh, yeah, of course I do. So the Bible is the authority? Yeah. Not your opinion? No. Not my opinion? No. What the Bible says? Yes? Yes? Yeah. Okay. So this is Christ's prayer. Yeah? Well, from John 17. From John 17. Listen to what he says. Jesus spoke these things, lifting up his eyes to heaven. So he's now speaking to the Father in heaven. He said, Father, the hour has come, glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. Would you agree that there are two persons being identified oh, there? Yeah, of course. Uh, there's no... I'm fully unaware of that, you know what I mean? Right. So we've established that... the, the one is in the past. But there's two persons. Yeah. There's the one praying, yeah. and there is the one being prayed to, yeah. the Father and the Son. And they're, and they're monitored, they're identified. Father, yeah. your Son. Yeah. So, is Jesus Christ truly the Son of the Father? In what sense? That he, is, that, he is in, that he is begotten of the Father, as the Scriptures say. Yeah. Right. Then this is Trinity, bro. I don't need to be embarrassed by this. No, I'm not embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed at all. Do you know what I mean? Because obviously, obviously there's a lot of people that always call from like John 17 yeah. uh, and such forth. And the way I understand it is probably... I'd, I'd go to like 14, 15 and 16 because Muslims will bring up John 17. Not interested in debating Muslims right now. I'm talking to you because what I want you to walk out of this park in saying is that I'm a Trinitarian Christian. Because while ever you have doubts about the Trinity, you have doubts about the Christian faith. I wouldn't say that. Because the Trinity is intrinsic to the Christian faith. Without Trinity, you don't have Christianity. Are you sure? Yes, explain absolutely. That. Just explain that. Okay, sure. So, you would agree with me that, that the Christian faith is built upon who we understand Jesus Christ to be? Yeah. Right. Jesus Christ identifies himself as the eternal Son of the Father. Yeah? Yeah, I get that. I understand that. Right. So if he is the eternal son of the father, that means the father is also eternally his father. Yeah, of course. So you've got two persons right there, right? But the son also says that the Holy Spirit is God. If you blaspheme him, yeah. it's punishable. In fact, it's an unforgivable sin to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Yeah, of course. Right. And the son says that the Holy Spirit is a helper, yeah. another advocate, yeah. one who will glorify me. One that will guide you into all paths of truth. 
the one who will be with the church forever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, so if the Holy Spirit is also God, then we have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Maybe it's just, maybe I'm a little bit rebellious, I don't know, because I believe, obviously, you know, I believe in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit without shadow of a doubt. And maybe it's just me wrestling with myself, trying to understand the Trinity as the, the separate, distinct, but they're all one. And when you look at scripture, and I've read from Jewish side and all that lot, it's like sometimes I think, yeah, there is a Trinity, I can see it as clear as day. But then when I go to other scriptures, I think, well, is the Trinity right? Is the Trinity... So what you've got to understand, bro, how long have you been a Christian? Oh, only about two years. Right, bro, there are, you've got two years of reflecting on this question. The church has 2,000 years of reflecting on this question. And from generation to generation, the Christian church has always defended the Trinity, from the first generations to the present. So you've got to, you've got to practice this exercise, you've got to practice this exercise of faith, not in your own, not in your own pride, not in your own intellect, but in the teaching of the church. And you've got to have confidence in that. Yeah. Sometimes I lack confidence. I'll, I'll agree in that. Yeah. Uh, but do you know what I mean? I, I will do. I, I'm such small. And sometimes I've battled in my flesh, wrestling with really living for God. Am I really living for God? Do I really understand everything? Yeah. Because when I first went to church, I was like 21. And a guy was like, you're a sinner. And Jesus, but I never really grasped or comprehended that. I was like, what do you mean I'm a sinner? I don't understand that. So it took me a long time to actually figure out, am I really a sinner? Because I can't get that. But then I did. And, I, and, and a lot yeah. of churches, a lot of churches need rebuke. A lot of fellowships are very poor at teaching good, grounded theology to their congregations. Yeah in a way that allows their congregation both to have faith in it and confidence in their own identity. And you need to ask whether your fellowship is one such fellowship. I, come out, I, I came out of that church more confused yeah. about life yeah. than I went into it. I really, because it was like, for me, I completely struggled because everyone in the church was all trying to be super spiritual. And I'm like, dude, I don't feel nothing like that. Yeah. Because it was like, you know, they taught the sinner's prayer for salvation. The sinner's and, prayer doesn't save you. I know. <laughs> and, and that's what I thought. And I always thought, I always kept saying the sinner's prayer, the same, the same. And no matter how many times, times I said it, I never felt nothing. Yeah. And everyone around me was like, they were praying the spirit in that tongues language, and it was like one of the signs of speaking in the tongues, you, you're being filled with the Holy Spirit, is yeah. you know, you've got to talk in that language. And so it was like, I faked it. Yeah. I genuinely faked it then. And it was like, no, this is wrong. A good, a, good, a good Christian fellowship yeah. will have an understanding of the sinfulness of man. Oh. And you won't have the pretensions, oh, I'm some super spiritual Christian. Yeah. Like, a, a real Christian community has got to be really human. Yes. Yeah, sure. And fully in touch with their humanity. Yeah. And that means all of their foibles and all of their failings and all of their sinfulness is not something that they need to pretend not to have. Yeah. I'm a sinner. Oh, so am I. Exactly. Yeah. But we're two sinners who acknowledge Christ as Saviour. Yeah, I would never deny that. Yeah. So, so acknowledging Christ as Saviour means also accepting who Christ is. Yeah. And Christ calls himself the Son of the Father. Which means that A, there is a Son, and B, there is a Father. But then listen to what he says in John chapter 16 from verse 12. I have, that's Jesus speaking, I, Jesus, have many more things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. But when he, so that's another person, isn't it? When he, when he, the spirit of truth comes, 
he will guide you into all truth. For he, that's another person, isn't it? For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. He, that's another person, isn't it? Will glorify me. For he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. That means then that he will take of mine. So what, what, what I want you to see first, let's not get distracted. Oh, no, 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 go on. What I want you to see is that Jesus Christ is speaking of the Father and he is speaking of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. So clearly the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit cannot be the same person. Because the scriptures don't allow you to think that. So you've got to have confidence in this. Now let me explain to you how something can be three and one at the same time, because I think that's where you're struggling. A, a little bit, yeah, more than anything. Okay, a little bit. Let, let me explain to you. You're going to get it immediately once I explain it to you, right? Would you agree with me that you're standing right now in three-dimensional space? Yeah. Is this dimension the same as this dimension? Well, is this the same as this? Yeah, and no. Well, is it? Is this, is the vertical the same as the horizontal? It can be, I guess. Well, no, it isn't. They're both axes, but they're different axes. They're distinguishable axes. And is this axis and this axis the same as this axis? They're called X, Y, and Z in mathematics. You're standing in three-dimensional space. Yeah. It is one, it is experienced as one, it is one thing. Yeah. Each of these dimensions is a dimension fully and completely like the other two, but they are distinguishable from one, one another. They aren't the same dimension. The horizontal, the vertical, and, and the depth, the X, Y, Z axes yeah. are not the same thing, but they are the same thing. I, yes. And so, it, like that, that shows to you that three can be one. It, of course. It's so just have confidence in yeah, this, bro. I think it's sometimes just more yeah. and being able to come being able to comprehend, comprehend it. Because it's like, you see so many different denominations that teach this, that teach that. But all of the, all Christian denominations teach the Trinity. Well, all Christian denominations teach the Trinity. There isn't a single, there isn't a, by definition, oh, by, if definition. It, by definition, yeah. if you don't teach the Trinity, you are not a Christian. I've heard, I've heard a lot of people say that. And it's a fact. It's like a Muslim saying that Muhammad isn't the prophet. Yeah. If a Muslim says Muhammad isn't the prophet, by definition, he's not a Muslim. It's like a Jew saying there's more than one God. If a Jew says there's more than one God, by definition, he's not a Jew. If a Christian says there isn't a Trinity, by definition, he's not a Christian. Now, there's a difference between being a heretic yeah. and being a weak brother who's stumbling. I interpret what you're saying to me as a weak brother who's stumbling. The difference between a heretic and someone who's just stumbling is that a heretic is stubborn in their errors. Yeah, I can see that. Sometimes so don't be I stubborn, bro. Don't be stubborn in your error. I think a lot of it's too... So when I first encountered Book of Tales, because it left me yeah. it left a lot of things in my life. I, I want, for the moment, I want to separate all of these secondary issues to this yeah. question of the Trinity. Yeah. Right? I, I accept there are other yeah, issues yeah, that yeah, we probably yeah. need to talk about. Yeah. Like your experiences in the yeah. church. But I want you to go away from here with a clear understanding of Christian monotheism. Yeah. Because this is where Christianity starts. Your discipleship can't go right until you see God right. That's why it's called orthodoxy. Yeah, I understand that, but isn't the gospel more about salvation than it is about the Trinity? Well, how can you have salvation without the Trinity? Can you show me how? Right, because yeah. 
we both agree that, that, that can, a man, can a man save us? Just a man. No. Can a man be a worthy sacrifice? Just a man. No, because scripture doesn't allow it. Exactly. So that means that, that God has to take unto himself human flesh. I agree. To be the worthy yeah. sacrifice. Yeah. I agree. So we're both in agreement. Right. Agree. So we can't have we can't have some soteriology without Trinity. Because the scriptures say soteriology is about salvation. Yes, yeah, sir. Trinity is about our view of God. Yeah. Because the scriptures say no one has seen the Father at any time. Nobody. Nobody. Only the, only those who have seen the Son have seen the Father. Which means that it is the Son that enters into creation. And the Holy Spirit. The Father doesn't enter into creation. No. Never. No. And see, for me, this it might sound like I'm a bit like... I understand the concept is just coming together. Because even when I read the Old Testament, I know that you have time, space and matter and you can't, they have to be, they have to come in together simultaneously. They can't like be one and then. And so I can understand certain aspects. So you can understand, just, just settle with me on this three dimensional space idea. You can accept that we've got three dimensions. Yeah, I understand that. And you accept that we've got one space. Yeah, I understand that. So three can be one. Yeah. One can be three. Yeah. There can be plurality yeah. and sameness at the same time. Yeah? Yeah. Right. So now if you can get that, all we're saying is the same about God. Yeah. But the thing that makes God plural is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. The thing that makes him one is the divinity, that thing, that substance, that essence that makes the Father God, the Son has it completely, and the Holy Spirit has it completely. But then how do you view... They're not, it's not a division, it's not shared between the three. Yeah, I understand that. Each one of them has the totality of it at the same time. Yeah. Yeah? I, I understand that, yeah. Think of another analogy. Let us imagine that you've got this mountain, yeah. and in this mountain is an underground lake, a massive yeah. underground lake. And the underground lake manages to break through the mountain at two points, and out of these two points flows two rivers. Yeah. Each of the rivers is distinguishable from the other one. Yeah. Each of the rivers is distinguishable from the lake. But they're all H2O, aren't they? Yeah, when you speak to... When you speak yeah, I understand where you come from now. Yeah? Yeah. And that's like it's the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. The, the, fa yeah. the Son and the Holy Spirit come from the Father. That is their source. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah? So what the Father is, the Son also is. What the Father is, the Holy Spirit also is. Yeah. Like the rivers are H2O because they come from a lake of H2O. So do you believe that the Holy Spirit is God but yes. separate from no, we don't. Right. Here's a, here's a maxim you need to understand as a Christian. As Christians, we can never confuse the persons of the Trinity. We can never say that the Father is the Son, or that the Son is the Father, or that the Father is the Holy Spirit, or that the Holy Spirit is the Father. But we cannot divide them. We can never use language like separate, division, Shared. We can't use this language. Yeah, I understand that now. Yeah, there, there are two tracks that Christian monotheism run on. Yeah. One, never confuse the persons. Two, never divide the divinity. It always must be one divinity. So whatever language we use, and we can use whatever language we like, we have to use language that sustains the unity of the divinity, and does not confuse the persons of the divinity. Does that make sense? It does now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah of course. Because it's like where I've heard Trinitarians say, well, they're distinct and separate, but yet they're one. And I'm thinking, well, hang on a minute, they can't be separate. Because that confuses well, people, yeah, well, people who use words like separate yeah. are using clumsy language. Yes. 
That's the problem. There's a lot of Christians using very clumsy language about the Trinity. I'll agree with you on that. And, and it's a fault here at the park. Lots of Christians use yeah, very I've clumsy seen, language seen about that. the Trinity. Yeah. Yeah, the church, when the church defines the Trinity in its councils and in its creeds, it uses very precise technical language. And we Christians can't go wrong by imitating that precise use of language. Yeah. So imitate the precise use of language of the because church. That used to confuse me more than anything is when they used to say like, well, they're all separate. And I'm thinking, no, that, that doesn't to me. Yeah. I can't get my head around that. And I think that's probably where some of my stumbling has come has from. Come from so, so hear this, they are distinguishable, but not separate. Are, are we talking about distinguishable when the shoe is on the earth in the flesh? And they are distinguishable because the Son yeah. is not the Father. And the Son but is the, not the Holy Spirit. But the, the thing that makes the Son God, I mean, that, that substance, that, that essence, that means that we can call him divine, he has totally and completely at the same time with the Father. He has totally and completely at the same time with the Holy Spirit. It's not divided. It's not divided. So then, it's not shared into three portions. So then how would you deal with like John 14? John 14. John 14, say from 6 to 7 onwards. John 14, let's have a look at it. 6 or 7. So this bit. No, it doesn't matter. So, so you're talking about this bit? Yeah. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, have I seen, been so long with you and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak of my own initiative, but the Father abiding in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, otherwise believe because of the works themselves. So then how would you... I'm going to explain. Because this passage is exactly the kind of passage that we go to to show that the Father and the Son have the same essence. Because if the Father and the Son have the same essence, then Christ is right to say that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. But please know, it says the Father, one person, is in me, a second person. So it's asserting two persons there. But they're sharing in one essence, they're sharing in like, one thing. I can't remember the first time I had, but what's that? Well, we talked about the full ball pen dwelling in the 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 dwelling the full Godhead dwells in bodily form. Right. Uh, I can't remember the. Let, 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 let me just show you something. Like in um, Ephesians. Might even be the passage you're looking it for. It possibly could be. No, it's in. Because uh, I wasn't actually so to talk to you. Well, I was. I did not talk to you in with Taylor. Because obviously it's constant. I'm not interested yeah, yeah, yeah. in Taylor. Taylor's a troll. Yeah. I'm not interested in debating the guy. He's, he's just a troll. And my advice to you is to stop following him. You're just feeding his, his, his unhealthy obsession with me. Right. Here you go. Right, Christ. This is, this is Paul speaking of Christ. So this also goes to this John passage. It shows, incidentally, that Paul didn't teach anything else from the other apostles. Yes, he, that being Christ, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, both in the heaven and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. 
All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him oh, has had the full pleasure to put all the fullness of deity in Christ. Oh yeah, I understand that. So when Christ, now we say when because obviously we're humans, we talk in temporal language and it's hard to escape that kind of language. But the, the Son being begotten of the Father means that he has the fullness of deity in him. Oh yes, yeah, I understand, yeah, yeah. Right? But here it's saying that he is the invisible, he is the image of the invisible God. So that's so, why Christ says, he who has seen me has yeah. seen the Father. Yeah. Because every uh, word yeah. that Christ yeah. speaks, he is, he is demonstrating yeah. the Father's words. Every action that he does in every way, he demonstrates who the Father is yeah. in human form. I've never looked at it that way before. I mean, I've read that verse before uh, and everything, but I've never, I've never thought of it in that way. That in John 14, John 14. Shall we move away from the shower? Yeah. Let's move away from the shower. Come this way,